get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, today Ryan Lee, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 creates 100% outsourced VIP days for software companies or conference organizers to serve their highest level customers. So Rise25 events have a proven track record of helping them get more referrals, increase retention with their highest level customers and get more engaged new customers. We do them all over the country. We've done them in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Sonoma. So if your company sees the value of bringing your highest level customers together to connect and collaborate, go to rise25.com, message us and see if your community qualifies. Uh, today, I am very excited. We have honored guest Ryan Lee, who's the founder <laughs> of Rewind. Woo! I, I, need, I, I needed that, yes. <laughs> I'm back. This is my second time on the show. I'm second time. I don't know if I've had anyone for a second time, actually, over the past almost over six years. Um, this is just two of ten. So two we, of ten. We're, we're I'm just game. getting started. I'm totally game. Um, so my I will- next it's called rise 26 i don't know if you knew that because <laughs> i know you have rise 25 i gotta go one above the you. next bar yeah exactly. <laughs> um so you're founder of rewind and what i like to call it is the superfood bar in its own category um yep. the company can be found on rewindtoday.com ryan's got you know you could check out the past interview but he's got a 22 plus year health and fitness background master's degree in exercise physiology created the world's fastest workout video, many more. Uh, Anyone who follows Ryan know he's obsessed with living a good life with health and his wife and four kids at the forefront of everything he does. Um, This is the second time. Ryan, thanks for coming back. Jeremy, I appreciate it. Uh, Anytime we wanna do this and and you wanna have me on, I love it. Uh, I love everything you do with Inspired Insider. I like the fact you dive in and you don't just talk about like all the glossy stuff, like, oh, tell us your marketing strategies. You talk about the real stuff because we all have ups and downs. So I'm totally. excited to come on and share, uh, especially now. I think it was about two years ago we did the last one, and a lot has changed since then. It's been a while, and, and we will dive into because the bar you can see here, I have it. It's actually, uh, I'm not just saying this, it's really good. And I even have Thank my you. patients trying it, and, and they're loving it also. And um, we'll dive into the ingredients, the packaging, everything. But I wanted to start with, there was a time when, um, I mean, I love what you do. You actually bring together great minds. And there was a time where I wasn't hearing from you as much. This was years ago. Mm -hmm. And something was going on in your life. What what, what was happening? Yeah, you know, I went through a really rough few years um, between, uh, we had a, so Years ago, I had a, a nutritional supplement company. It wasn't bars, it was just supplements. Um, and good products, and it was doing really, really well. We hit uh, seven figures a month in revenue, uh, but things almost overnight changed because we, the way the company was structured, the way it was marketed, we were an affiliate-driven business. So we had, there were about maybe 10 people, 10 super affiliates who drove 99% of our business. One of them left, and when he left, he started a competing company and basically took everyone with him. And we had just done a multi-million dollar blanket order. So, so almost overnight, we went from like all this revenue to like it almost completely dropping. And now all of a sudden, we're millions of dollars in debt. So there was that financial stress right around that time. Um, my mom was diagnosed with lung cancer and passed away after about mm. two months. Um, so sorry. I started Jeez. to eat more. Thank you. Um, I had just filmed an infomercial. So I lost about $75,000. It never even aired. Um, so I had all this mounting stress stress. Uh, my fourth child was just born. Um, and then I started eating more and I started getting pain in my joints and that I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. So this was all over the course of a couple of years. Then, then my father-in-law, uh, was diagnosed with a brain tumor, had a massive stroke, then passed away. My brother-in-law had a stroke at age 46. So it was like, just, it's, just <laughs> it's like, what an avalanche. Else? Yeah. And I had just signed a, a big multi-year lease on my this big office space. And now I didn't need anyone in there. Um, and I couldn't get out of the lease. So it was like, uh, it was just everything just collapsing. Uh, so that was fun. 
So we, we had a good couple of years. Uh, but I was still, you know, look, I had, I've been a full-time entrepreneur. I haven't had a job since 2002. So I didn't have a choice, and my family didn't have a choice. I had to keep working and putting on a brave face. But it's funny, when I look back now at some of the emails I used to send and some of the marketing, it was really dark. Uh, it was dark. A lot what of do you cursing. mean? I was just, cur- you know, I'm not like a cursing guy. I was just, I was aggressive. I was attacking people. Um, even when I'd go to these events, I'd stay out till three, four o'clock in the morning and drink. And it's just, it wasn't me. Um, I just became someone who I didn't uh, like looking back in the mirror. So yeah. I needed to change. Um, it's all perspective. And, you know, oftentimes when I listen to you, you come from um, that perspective, like, um, because you worked in a hospital setting, right? And right. so whenever I hear you talk about things, you always have a great perspective about you. So for people yeah. who don't know your complete background, just just a little bit about what you, your previous life. Yeah. So the first six years out of college, so I graduated with an undergraduate degree in recreational therapy. So I was a a, if people know this, it was, it was a CTRS. I was a certified therapeutic recreation specialist. So basically, I did like play therapy with kids. I did sports and fitness. In the first two years, I was just in the pool and I did, adapted aquatics. So all I did was work with kids with different uh, physical disabilities. So everything from spina bifida to cerebral palsy, um, spinal cord injuries, mm. we had kid, kids who had been burn victims, um, gunshot wounds, you name it. Uh, if there was a physical issue, this was, this was the, we worked with inpatients. So they'd come, they'd get their therapy and, and there was a school in the hospital, they'd get that all day. And then we would work for them from three till 10 at night and just be with the kids. I would tuck them in at night. It was, it was great. Um, so that was my career for, for six years. That's all I did. Um, on the side, I was training clients. So I'd wake up early in the morning and I would, I would train clients. I would train athletes. Um, and I put myself through graduate school at, at night, uh, and I got a master's in exercise physiology and started doing more training on the side. So I started to kind of blend the two. And that's when I started my first website at the end of 1998-99 to promote my sports training business. Yeah. So it was all kind of blending. Yeah. yeah. As we fast forward today, I mean, you were mentioning all that stuff, the stress of life, and your health was suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you do to get on the mend? Because like you said, I think yeah. you sent the email and you had the same – size pants he did in like seventh grade or something or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So the so I'd had, you know, my health started failing. So I'm like, well, I need to take care of my health. But like you know, like oh like all things, I didn't really have a system. I, I went to one doctor and, and it took probably three, four months for them to even diagnose it was an autoimmune disorder. I went to a podiatrist because my feet hurt. I went to a physical therapist. I went to an orthopedic doc and none of them could figure it out until I went to a rheumatologist. So when I figured that out, the, basically I went extreme. No sugar, no gluten, hmm. no dairy. Uh, so basically I could just eat like celery all day. Um, and I started to lose Sounds weight. Sounds delicious. Yeah. And, but there was no system. It was just – they basically said you can't eat any of this crap anymore. I'm like, well, all right. And it was, it was okay for a few weeks or even a month. And I'm like, I need to eat something. Um, so then I would fall off and i try to get back. And it was just up and down and up and down. And about a year and a half ago, we went on vacation. I'll never – everyone always has that turning point. I took my wife and kids. Uh, it was in February. We went to, we w- went down to Florida and I remember it was cold in New York. I put a pair of jeans on, went down. And then seven days later I came back and I went to put the same jeans on and they didn't fit anymore. I said, well, so my wife, what the hell's, you know, did you wash my pants? Said, What'd no, you do? <laughs> yeah. What'd you do? She said, I didn't do anything. I didn't even know you hit that. So I went and then for some reason, I, I had like a bad ear infection. I went to a doctor the next day, and they weighed me, and I was almost 200 pounds. I'm only five foot eight, and and then she said, "Well, you have you have borderline hypertension," and I'm like, "All right, that scared the crap out of me. I don't know why that scared me so much." I'm like, "Oh my, what is this? Beginning a heart disease?" And it was that day, between not getting my pants and, be, and being sick, and I I would, I would never get sick, uh, and the high blood pressure, and the I'm like, never again. And I said, "I need hmm. to figure out what the I I need a system." I yeah. knew that, was it, and it had to be simple. And it can't be, I could never eat this again. So that was, so the next morning, I said, okay, I know morning routine is vital. I got to start the day off right. And I, I came with the streets. I have to win the morning. That was it. So I said, let me start with a bar, because I know I'm not going to make a smoothie every morning. I've tried that. That was one of my things I tried. And I just, you know, there's fruit, there's frozen fruit, and my kids, like, all of a sudden I have a banana, and I have four kids, and one of them will eat the last banana, and I, I have nothing, and all of a sudden I'm making a, 
you know, a smoothie with like a carrot. There's nothing else. It was awful. So I'm like, let me figure out, let me get a bar. Let me just have a nutrition bar so I can get the hell out of the house and just have a bar and it'll hold me over for a couple hours. Problem is I couldn't find a good bar. So Jeremy, you should have seen, I went to one of these uh, vitamin shopping GNs and I bought like 15 different bars and every day I would have one. And it was like, they got worse and worse and worse. Right. They, every one I tasted, it, you know, it, they, the problem with, and I'm not saying all, I'm not saying every single bar company. There's some good, I know you've had a lot of bar companies on your, yeah. your program. There's some really good ones. A lot of them though, problem is when you start getting into the retail stores, you have to keep price down and they, they put fillers in, they have a lot of artificial sweeteners and the artificial sweeteners have this little kind of chemical aftertaste. If anyone's yeah. ever had one, you eat it and you're like, hmm. And then all of a sudden you're like, ooh. And you, the giveaway is usually, not always, usually if it has a picture of something like cookies or cake or ice cream or you know brownies or pie, if there's any picture of that, it's, it's artificial, like it's a lot of artificial stuff. And it, had, it also had, most of them have whey protein, which was dairy, which yeah, was totally. causing inflammation. Um, they have gluten, so the protein wasn't really good. Then I tried a green bar and they all tasted like grass. Like just that's long. pretty. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah, they do, and that's you know. Look, I get what it is. I just I couldn't, I couldn't eat it. You can't um, choke and it down. The, yeah, and fruit bars I like because they taste good. They were chewy. Problem is they didn't have any protein. They had a ton of sugar, and I was hungry like an hour later. So I'm like, why the hell is there not a bar that has greens, that has fruit, um, that has good protein, that doesn't, but but protein that's not whey, that's gluten free. Um, that's vegan so, and I couldn't find one. I'm like, hmm. And so after a couple of months, but I started even eating these bars that weren't great and at least I had the system and I started losing weight and then I started saying, well, why can't I just create one? I started trying to make my own stuff, it wasn't working. And then I, I talked to a couple of different companies that make bars. I said, here's my idea, here's my idea for a formula. I want these greens, these fruits. And then we just started kind of playing. I'm like, you know what? I think I could make a business out of this. And that's, uh, yeah. and it took probably eight months of back and forth because the, the taste had to be good. As you know, you said you tried the bars that tasted good. It had to be healthy, it had to be gluten free, it had to be vegan, it had to have all this stuff, but it had to taste good. And it took us about eight months and we I think we nailed it. At what point, Based on, at what yeah. point did you decide, you know, you're filling a need for yourself that you could actually just, you know, actually produce them for you and your family that you are gonna start a business out of it? Or maybe that's just in your nature. Yeah, I think it's in my nature. <laughs> yeah. I was I was looking at, it, it started with a kind of a selfish thing, right? Like, I'm like, why is there no bar that, and I created this, this I'm creating this category called the super bar. Why is there no bar that does all these things? Yeah. Um, so selfishly, I want to create it for myself. But yeah. then I'm like, well, if, if, if I'm having trouble finding good things, there's got to be other people. Maybe yeah. it's not 100 million people or 10 million or even a million. Maybe it's just yeah. a couple thousand people, but that's okay. Um, for me at this point, it's not about just the money. Like, of course I want to build a profitable business, but, um, the idea of creating something that's going to help a lot of people and it's going to be fun and I'm going to, and I'm going to be able to get back into the health space, which was always my first love was like, why not? Right. You live once. Let's do it. Um, Yo, Ryan, it's not easy to create a bar. Um, I want to hear about some of the challenges in eight months. I remember before even, I don't know, maybe it was nine years ago or something. I actually thought the exact same thing. I was like, eating these bars are horrible. And so I went and I went and actually got this company, had a, a box created for me. I bit yeah. into it and my like custom bar that I made. And there was a, like the nut, the, one of the um, shells was still in the bar. I'm like, for, oh. I'm not creating a bar. Forget this. Yeah. Like there's too yeah. much liability. Like it's yeah. hard to do. I wasn't willing to take that that risk at the time, mm -hmm. and so this is not easy to do. I mean, it looks like yeah. oh, I could just slap a bar together. People are there's companies, <laughs> but it's it's especially with the ingredients you have. Yeah. What are yeah. some of the challenges in the in the eight months, um, or the things that maybe yeah. you didn't realize that you had to um, overcome? Well, you know, there's no perfect bar, right? Because no matter what you do. There's always going to be people who are, no, totally. no matter what, who are like, well, it, it has too much of this, or I don't like greens, or, or you know, you can't I can't please want, everyone. Yeah. You absolutely, so that's the first thing. If you're going to start a business or a bar company, you can't please everybody. It's, it's all about figuring out who your audience is and just speaking directly to them. But a bar, because I created two nutritional supplement companies in the past, um, bars by far the hardest. 
because you have to figure out um, you know, what your market's going to be, who is it you're going for, right? Is there a need? And, and if it's a crowded space, how are you going to stand out? How are you going to differentiate? Um, it's, the ingredients have to be good. At least I, I believe they do because I'm not, I'm not trying to appeal to like get in Walmart and sell it for 99 cents. I can't. The, the ingredients, yeah. I, knew it, I knew it was going to be a little bit more expensive to create than just putting together a bunch of garbage. Um, but the, the hardest part was getting all of these ingredients and getting them the right nutritional profile. Because at first, the bar, you know, one of the, the bars, the first ones tasted good, but it was, it was just too much sugar. I knew it had to be under 10 grams of sugar. And then it didn't have enough fiber, so I knew we had to have more fiber to kind of balance it out. <clears throat> so getting all those ratios right. Mm. Not perfect, but but good. A good, clean, yeah. healthy bar. Um, and so that's one thing. Anyone could do that, but then making it taste good was the <laughs> toughest thing. That was, nothing comes close. And we knew it was good because our manufacturer, you know, they've gone through thousands of different bars. And the person who was our, the person helping with the formulation said, I got to tell you, we, we had the bar and we just tasted your, the recipe and everything put together. I ate the entire bar. It's like, and I never, ever do that. It's, mm. it's that good. So I'm like, all right, I think we got a winner. And the minute I took a bite, I loved it. And I, I called uh, Kate, who runs our operations, immediately and said, we got it. Like, I knew we nailed it. So, but 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 challenge with a bar is inventory. Is mm. your fir- you, it, what's, it's, there's a positive and negative. The positive is the negative. So the, the positive is that, well, here's the negative. You have to, it's, it's, it's not a product you can say, okay, I'll order a hundred bars. It doesn't work like that. You need to order like tens of thousands of bars at a time. Right. So you're talking. Or you'll be paying like $6 a bar or something yeah, exactly. crazy. It, it, it yeah. doesn't make sense economically. Um, if you could even find someone to do it. Yeah. And it would be, it'd be five, six bucks a bar. So you have to do tens of thousands of bars, which is tens and tens of thousands of dollars. So if you don't have any money, you're, you're not getting in. Um, so there's that, which is, which is not great for an entrepreneur who doesn't have a lot of funds. But it's good because the, there's a much higher barrier to entry, so there's not as many competitors. You know, anyone could throw up an ebook in two minutes. Anyone could even get nutritional supplements. There, there's companies that private label stuff. You know, some of them are crappy products, but you could throw a label on. You know, there's people who teach this stuff on Amazon, right? You throw a label on, call it, you know, Dr. Weiss's miracle potion. <laughs> I have um, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why, that's why you look so good. Rise 26, baby. Um, and then all of a sudden you're in business. You can't do that with a bar. Uh, so there was, so it's good, it's bad, <laughs> there's a higher barrier to entry, but it's good because there's a higher barrier to entry. It's like a moat, right? It's a little tougher to get in. Um, and then, the, you know, then there's product liability insurance and there's a shelf life. If you have a really good natural bar, you can't have it sitting around for eight months, nine months, 10 months, um, yeah. unless you, you want to have a lot of pr- preservatives in it. Um, and then even, even little things like right now, we, you know, as of this record, we launched it in the summer, which not always the best on time, but when we're delivering, it's going to be sometimes in hot trucks. Yeah. And if it's shipped in the mail and it's shipped across the country, there's nothing we could do about that. So sometimes the bars can get a little melty. And if you're doing a bar that has any kind of chocolate coating, you're dead. Uh, so there's a lot of things to think about when doing a bar. So uh, there's three, there's three I'll, ways I'll, I kind of like, go ahead. Yeah. One, one other challenge also, yeah. because, because we have so many different ingredients, we had an issue with pea protein. That's mm. one of our protein sources. And, and all of a sudden, Every supplier ran out of pea protein, so we were delayed three months. So that was fun. Okay, sorry. What was your next question? <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of, when I thought about what I wanted to talk about with you, I kind of broke it up into a couple things. Um, the evolution of the product, right? Because I'm sure what you started off thinking is not necessarily what we see here. And then the team, you always are really good at assembling and bringing together an A team. And also the packaging is unique. Um, so I want to start with the evolution of the product. When you yeah. first, you, you came to this probably after many iterations, what did mm-hmm. it look like in the beginning? And then what were some of the key changes you, you made? And I'll tell you what I like about it when you're done. And it probably, I'm assuming it kind of came into one of the changes that you discovered. The At the beginning, um, the bar was probably less, it probably had less total ingredients. Mm. It was it was a little bit more, probably a little bit more of a fruit bar. Mm. Um, a little bit there were just a fewer ingredients. I still wanted all the good stuff, but it wasn't quite as a full complex bar. Um, 
but then I, as we started adding more stuff and adding more flavors, um, and especially the organic, like I'm like, well, maybe the, the protein could be either pea or almond, but I didn't even think of cashew. Uh, so a lot of those little subtle, let's add this in, let's remove this. Uh, so it became a, a more complex bar, which mm. in turn, what, what's really good about it is it has a little bit more flavor complexity, which is what we're getting. What, what we're finding, it's really interesting. The people who are, I guess I call them bar people, people who love having bars and they've tried every bar, love it because it's not a one note flavored yeah. bar. It has, they'll, it's, it's almost like people who like wine. They'll drink, like, oh, it has this note and oh, it tastes the, I right. taste this and I t- it tastes the spinach and oh, it's, it, oh, now I get the almond and, I, and as you chew it, oh, I, I, it tastes a little bit like a Fig Newton. So that's, that was definitely one change how it evolved from a little bit more. I, want, I knew I wanted a bar with some different things, but I didn't realize the complexity and all of the different flavor profiles coming together. Mm-hmm. I mean, if for people who don't realize, so I'm looking at it, and there's spinach, kale, almond butter, cashew butter, strawberries, blueberries, cherries, pea protein, spirulina, green tea, chlorella, dates, quinoa, cocoa, and coconut. So <laughs> talk about a complex flavoring group. Um, yeah. And so you hear that, you'd be like, well, how the heck, how would it, how would it taste good? <laughs> and it works. How, yeah. What was some of the feedback you had or some of the people who tried it had to make it like this? Um, I'm assuming you're, maybe your wife tried it, your probably family yeah, tried you know, it, your other people at, try it. At the beginning, um, a couple, you know, the first few iterations, were t- it tasted more like just almond butter. That was the overwhelming flavor. Mm. Just, it tasted like I was eating a spoonful of almond butter. And I like almond butter, but... I don't want to have that every day. So that was the biggest change probably when we lessened the almond butter, added the cashew and added a little bit more greens and the green tea mm-hmm. to round it out um, and, and adding the blueberries um, and, and the cherries to give it a little bit more sweetness as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was that was really the feedback. That was the more, resounding more, feedback. More almond. It was a little too almondy. And now it's more complex. And look, there is does every single – no, there are people – if you don't like – Anything that has any greens, like at all, you'd probably be like, I don't know if they, I don't know if they love it, it's, and that's okay. You can't have every single person. I mean, there look, there are people in the world who don't like chocolate chip cookies. I don't know how that's humanly possible, <laughs> but there are. I agree. There are some freaks in the world who don't like warm, soft baked chocolate chip cookies. So you get you, you that is proof or apple pie. That's proof you can't please everybody. Um, one thing I love about it that I think is different. I mean, obviously the ingredients is unique but also there's a there's a crunch to it Mm -hmm. most bars don't have a crunch and so i was looking like wow this is good tastes good but it's got a crunch to it and it's like what is creating that crunch that's it's funny that's the other it's it's funny you mentioned and i forgot to mention that's the other big thing we get people say i can't believe how good it tastes i was really really surprised like pleasantly surprised and the other thing is they love the texture of it because it's chewy but it's got a really slight little crunch to it, um, and it's it's probably a combination of the um, the almond, the organic almond butter, the organic cashew butter, or even some of the quinoa. Like it's it's yeah. it's a combination of some of that, um, and it puts just. Yeah. But it's not an overwhelming crunch, but it's a little bit. So it gives it gives a little bit more bite to that chewy yeah. texture. And I'm like, yeah, it's definitely some quinoa in there because usually mm-hmm. when I bite into something, it's got that crunch. I'm a little worried that there's something bad in there because usually right. it's from something that's like filling it like you know something like that's a less healthy or something, but yeah, yeah but it's probably from the quinoa which is really yep. healthy um right. yeah so i love what you've come up with with the kind of the evolution of the product and uh like you said when you go out with tens of thousands of bars you got to make it right or it's just you're stuck with that or just you're stuck with it you're um, stuck with a lot of bars that have you know there's a there's a clock ticking like we have an expiration date the the real key to a, a, a consumable product whether it's a bar or skincare or anything like that really um, it's it's not getting the first order you could probably get first orders you could probably get people to try it yeah. the whole business is dependent on reorders and if you don't have something that's really good whether it's a really good tasting bar that delivers on its promise or skincare that delivers on its promise or water that whatever it is if you don't deliver on that you can get someone to buy once but they're not going to reorder and your business is just a churn and burn business we we've only been live uh 10 days wow. and already we're getting reorders in and, and we have six it's right now our box is 16 bars we're going to actually 
make the next run 12 bars in a box. But Why? we're already getting reorders. I, I wanted to – I am um, – I'm obsessed with having people have feel like they get a really, really good value. And I think right now it's 16 bars because our the retail is three dollars a bar because it's again it's expensive to make. Right. Um, it costs I, more I was overall. Con- yeah, and I was concerned that people like, well, it's it's three dollars a bar, which is fine, but it's sixteen in a box, so it's forty eight bucks. And some people are like, well, I don't really want to spend forty eight bucks if I don't know what it's gonna taste like. So mm. I just feel like at least if it's twelve in a box and it's three dollars for it's thirty six dollars, it's right. it's much People are much more willing to yeah. try it. Yeah, uh, totally. So I'm, I'm always, I am, I'm, I'm, just, I'm obsessed with consumer experience. Yeah. Um, even you, you can't see here. This all actually. Let me show you really quickly. Yeah, go on. Hey, can you say hi? We do all of our um, this whole space. I mean, this is like my little. You know, it's called Rewind, so it's like a fun retro brand. But we do all of our product fulfillment from here. Hmm. We get all of our orders here. So. I, the reason I did that now is it the most efficient? No. Is it better to just have it at some like warehouse next to UPS in Indiana? Yes, but they don't really care as much. Even with our box, what we do is every single order we write the person's name right there, like right across the top. We get yeah, every mine's order right there. out. Jeremy, every yeah. Yeah, yeah, every order goes out the door within 24 hours, even if it's on Saturday. Whether it's Kate or someone else or myself coming in. And printing out labels, and even though they don't do post office pickup, driving a couple miles to the post office and dropping it in there to make it sure it gets out, people are getting the bars within a day. And we just want to have people be blown away because we want to treat people how we want to treat them how we'd like to be treated ourselves. Um, so we're really that's a big know. decision. It's a, I Huge would imagine decision. a tough decision because it's not the most convenient decision. It wasn't tough at all. That's the thing. Hmm. It it should have been tough, but it wasn't. It was even when I was talking with Kate when I was coming up with this idea. I said, "We've got to do our own fulfillment because I want to be able to write people's names and like I want to have this space where we could go, we can play, we can do videos, we can have people in our space trying bars. I don't want to just run it out of like some random apartment, you know, um, or just some random office building." Yeah. So. I wanted to have a real place, a real space, um, and plus, my wife wouldn't let me turn our my spare room into this <laughs> with all this kind of fun stuff in the background. So that was well, that was probably the driver of it, right? The so driver. Got this kinda, but but uh, it's it's cool because I have my kids. I have four kids, and my two oldest have been coming lately and working and helping, and I'm teaching them business and fulfillment. I started something called the Rewind Institute where we're working with inner city kids and they're going to be coming here and we're teaching them business and entrepreneurship. So this is like our fun play space. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of things I want to talk about. I want to go into the audience and the brand because you're big on who you're serving. But talk about the Rewind Institute. I have a note because I really want you to talk about what you're doing with, with that and the inner city kids. So I worked in the children's hospital for six years, and then I went on a little detour and I did the internet for like six months. One company bought my internet company back at that time for like no money. I had a lot of stock options and everything crashed. So I went back to work and I became a gym teacher. And it was in it was in the South Bronx in an area called Hunts Point, which was the roughest of the, rough. anyone who knows Hunts Point, uh, it's a rough area. And this was an alternative high school, so it was the kids who couldn't even make it in the public schools. Almost every one of them had a had arrest record. And this was really their last chance. So I was, tasked with building their health and phys ed department from scratch and it was it was amazing and working with these kids was uh was just incredible um some really smart bright kids who were just you, i mean born with like 10 strikes against them you know their their mom had them when they were 14 years old and their their dad it, was shot and killed and he had 17 kids like craziest stuff you could imagine um they were in the bloods or the crypts or the latin kings so all this stuff uh, but I really, really loved working with them. So now that I've kind of come full circle and I have all these opportunities, I started volunteer teaching at a school. There's a city next to us called Stanford, and there's there's an inner city school, uh, and this is this is the school that's it's, a, it's an alternative high school. And what's funny is a guy I used to teach with, he was the social studies teacher. He now runs that school, wow. and we've stayed in touch. His name's Mark, and Mark and I have kept in touch. I said, Mark, I'm starting this new company. I'm, I'm do, I want to just I want to just come and, and teach your kids. I want to do volunteer work with you. So I've been going to their school and teaching entrepreneurship. And I I've I had a we do a big event each year called Freedom Fest. And I invited them to come and they all attended the uh, event and they got to network with all the other entrepreneurs. So what we're mm-hmm. doing now, Mark and I just met last week. We're going to do a whole program uh, with their school where 
they're going to have assignments. They're going to do case studies like, okay, do a case study on Netflix. And, and how do they market? How do they do positioning? Mm. What was their IPO you know, number? And how so much valuable. Stock- oh, my God. So they're going to do that for a month. We're going to do like five or six kids. There's going to be a teacher. We're going to see if we can get actual um, New York, uh, Connecticut State credit for this. Then they're going to come here to this actual space, and they're going to spend the day with me, and I'm going to teach them real entrepreneurship. Like, this is how we do order fulfillment. This is how we do marketing. This is how we do position. This is what we did. And just give them an experience they'd never, ever get. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because people pay me a lot of money for that advice, and they're going to get that all for free. They have to obviously qualify, and we want people who are motivated. We want people who want to be here. And then there's going to be opportunities for them to actually work here. We'll, We'll give them paid internships. So, And every month, we're going to have a different group, a different cohort of like five or six kids. And just, and it's not just going to be business and entrepreneurship. I, because that's that's cool, um, but it's going to be about life skills and showing them there's another way and there's other opportunities and what and maybe they don't want to start their own business, but if they learn about social media marketing and they're a 16 year old kid who really understands Instagram, why can't they? I mean, that's a really hireable skill. And I know if someone spent time with me working and they're running our Instagram, there there's dozens or hundreds of companies that would hire them in a heartbeat. Mm. So I am really, really, I, I mean. I'd There's a lot of opportunity that they didn't even realize that is there, probably. They've only seen, you, you either hustle, and, and I'm not talking hustle like Gary Vaynerchuk, oh, you work hard. Hustle, by the, anyone who's from the streets knows hustle means you're a drug dealer. That's what hustling means, which is funny, because every time I hear hustle, oh, you got to hustle. That's a drug dealer. You're a hustler. You're a drug dealer. So the, the, the options they've either seen, they're a hustler, which is a drug dealer, or you know, you work at McDonald's or or you know, Walmart, you make six or eight bucks and that's it. I mean, that's really big extreme. They've seen. Yeah. Right. Um, what were some of the are, takeaways they had? I don't know if they shared them with you after going, you know, being exposed to that through your conference and your network. You know, it was funny. Um, one of the days I was there, there was a group of, it was about seven kids. And one of the girls at the end said, wow. She's like, you, you really motivated. She said, Mr. Lee, I feel like I could do anything. Mm. And I'll never, oh, I got goosebumps. Um, that was really cool. Just seeing her light up, she's like, wow, I feel like I could do anything. Hmm. And I said, you can. Right? Like, yeah. you can. Totally. Why can't you? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, giving these kids a shot, um, I mean, that's the way you change their life. Not by just giving them money, right? It's giving them skills and the, the ability to change their life and have pride in your work and, and give them skills that are, that are helpful in the real world that can accelerate their careers. Yeah. Or start a business. Why not? Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And I, I look forward to updates on that. That's really cool. Um, it's like invaluable for these kids and for the community. Um, talk about the audience. So you go after, you're always good also about going after a pain point, a need, and a specific mm-hmm. audience or person. Like people don't like greens. This isn't for them. Who's the audience right. that, who is this for? Ba- you, basically, if you look at like some of these uh, posters behind me, Right, you see the Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Back to the Future. If you haven't seen those movies, we're not for you. <laughs> that, I mean, that's it. That's my audience, right? If you're like, "What's the Breakfast Club?" We're not for you. Uh, if you can't name a character, <laughs> if you've never seen Ferris Bueller, we're probably not for you. Uh, we're we're definitely for people probably 35 to like 55 years old, um, people who are just not happy with their health and they want to turn back the clock. They want to feel better. You had mentioned before with my story, like I am now down to the same weight and pants size I was in high school, which, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 46. So never did I, I mean, I weigh less than when I got married 20 years ago. So, uh, I want to, I want to show people that you can do this and you could do this without deprivation, without saying I could never eat this again, or I could never have good. I just want to inspire us, but do it also in with my own kind of fun sense of humor and talk about nostalgia and talk about some of these records and, you know, Van Halen and Meatloaf and <laughs> Whitney Houston, like enjoy it because here's the thing with, so I, and even the, the box, right? The box looks like a boom box. Mm. Like I just want to recapture that fun before the internet, right? <laughs> like we had actually had lives before the internet. So that's that's really who I'm speaking to. Uh, look, we have we have people who are buying the bars and saying my kids love them. My kids love them. My my oldest is a competitive tennis player and she has a bar every day before she plays. My my ten year old daughter loves the bars. Every morning she has a bar. So kids love them too. But we're really marketing towards towards the parents. Uh, yeah. You know, more Gen X, uh, more people who get all my obscure references. Uh, 
People so, want to get their health back. I mean, in that range, absolutely. that's when there's, unfortunately, your health starts to deteriorate a little bit more right. or it, and, you don't heal as quickly as you used to. Right. Your recovery is slower. And, but then you start saying, I mean, it drives me crazy when my friends say, ah, oh, I'm getting so old. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not at all. Like, we can do this and we can do it simply. And so it, it's incredible how your life changes when you just discover this and you start eating a little bit better and start exercising more and moving more and just everything, your relationships are better, your career is better, your business is better, everything is just better. And if you do have kids, let's do what we can to have you live as long and healthy as possible. Why not? Right? Like, let's do it. So totally. that's, that's who we're there for. How did you arrive at the packaging? It's really unique, the purple. We, did it you know always start fun. like this or did it change? No, it's changed probably that's probably changed the most, our packaging. I always knew it was going to be Rewind. That, for some reason, I, I, the name. I don't know. I, it was Rewind because it had that double meaning of rewinding the clock, right? Like turning back the years. And plus the rewinds on cassettes, right? We, you know, especially if you grew up in the 80s, like cassettes, everything was rewind. VHS tapes, rewind. So that double meaning of that cassette and the visual of rewinding plus rewinding the clock. It, I'm like, that's the name. I didn't care what anyone said. That's the friggin' name. Uh, come hell or high water, I'm building a company called Rewind when, when I came over the bar. But uh, the, at first, we were going to do like a chalkboard kind of coffee shop theme, and that didn't fit. And then we were thinking about colors. Uh, and I said to Kate, well, what about like, let's see what it looks like in purple. And then our graphic guy came up with purple, and immediately we're like, that's it. Like, that was the color. And then we have a great graphics person, and we started we, – we spent – probably more money on graphic design mm. and packaging and labels than we did our initial run of products. And I'm saying it's that important because if you don't, and we get compliments all the time between the box and the bar and the purple and the packaging and the look, like totally. it's really, really important that you nail yeah. your look and yeah. your feel. Uh, and, and I knew it had to just feel different and kind of cool and fun. It, I didn't want it to be like every other friggin' organic gluten-free product where it's just a white package and green you like I can't out organic them I can't out vegan them but what they can't do is they can't out Michael Jackson me right so we're, <laughs> it's we're a first impression through. you know they yeah. judge off a of first impression even before they they read all the ingredients or see it right and we want people and they and it, love it when they get the box and they open it and they're like wow that's what we want yeah. We, we just want that feel. Um, and then not drop the ball and follow up with them and, hey, how you doing? How you enjoying it? Because during our testing phase, and, and I was ordering bars from different companies. I remember we got a, a bars from one company. I'm not going to mention their name. And the packaging was pretty cool. And it was like script and kind of, hey, it's homemade stuff. One, they sent one box, it, you know, just an order with a, uh, a packing slip. No note, no nothing. And they never, ever followed up. Mm. Not one email. They followed up. I got an email from them four months later that said, hey, 20% off sale. Like, man. So you spent all this great money lost and all this stuff packaging. Yeah, total lost opportunity. Yeah, I'm not saying you have to email me every day and try to sell me something. But where's the relationship? Where's the care? Nothing. It was purely transactional. Mm. And yeah. I want to talk to, at some point, um, I want to talk about the team. But... I love the um, the free T-shirt. As soon as I oh, yeah. like, I had this out and I opened it, and a couple people were like picking it up and looking at it. Like, I want a free T-shirt. How do I, how do I get a free T-shirt? I'm like, you can't take a picture with my box. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to get your own box get if your you want box. your T-shirt. Yeah. Um, so I want you to talk about the marketing. Yeah. Um, but before we do, I want to talk about the team because the team is what's making everything happen, and, and you're really right. good at assembling an A team. So who are you? What were the skill sets you were looking for, and how did you get this this group together? We no, we have the best team. Um, but we, I also know that you've got, especially to start, you have to keep things lean. Um, I think some people get excited with the idea of building a business, and they overhire, and they'll have twenty people. And, and I wasn't raising any funds. This is all self funded, so I didn't want to go out and raise money and and do all that stuff and give away fifty percent of the company. So I knew I would I'd start slower. Um, the main thing, and if you've ever read the book, and of course I can't remember the name of it, where there was the 
Visionary and Integrator. Mm. I can't remember. Uh, yes. By Gino Wickman. Gino um, Wickman. Rock and Fuel. I, I, I had the guy on, the other guy. Rock Fuel. Yeah, he's great. Mark Winters, yeah. Uh, great book. Um, so I knew I needed the Integrator. Yeah, and, you're the visionary, totally. Right, right. And it's Kate. And the the key with finding a person, it's they have to be aligned with the mission. It's not about... it's. When, when you bring someone on, it can't be about, here's your job role, here's your responsibility. It's got to be, are you in with this mission? And it, the mission is to build mm. this great company that's going to change a lot of lives. Yeah. That's the most important thing. So you have that one person who, and, and Kate's the one who's more organized and operations and staying on it. Because in the past, I would try to build everything myself. And it would crumble because I put it all on my shoulders. So now, if we like even with the boxes, there was the box. And then there's the UPC code. And then there's... Is it the right size and what's the production run and how do we, you know, we, oh, this guy sent us an invoice so for 2,000 extra boxes. Where are we going to store them? What's the fee? All of that stuff, it's not my best, it's not best use of my time doing that all day. But Kate is organized and we, we, we just go back and forth and I say, here's what to do. And she does it and knocks it off the checklist. That's, that was the most important thing. And then we have one person who's doing like just a lot of the kind of daily day-to-day tasks helping out with little things answering emails and the rest of the team is pretty much project by project so we have a graphics person and we pay we pay them hourly um we have a tech guy we pay hourly so all these other people are just outsourced i mean we've we found people on upwork we found people on fiverr to do a little task here and there we didn't need to hire a full-time graphics person um i want to keep the monthly bloat as low as possible yeah it's not you it's not what you make it's what you keep totally Uh, so, and I'm okay growing slower and kind of figuring out and then hire what we need. Even with, with traffic, we're talking now to a media buyer who will start running our traffic. And I mean, our last company that we grew to, to seven figures in revenue a month was, we never had a full-time traffic person. We had one person who was basically paid on performance. So Yeah, these uh, days you can, you know, really get specific skill sets oh yeah, we, when we you need them. Just does... YouTube videos, you know, you, you could do, you could have as, and even video production. We have someone that came in, he was here for an hour and a half, filmed like 10 videos that he left and that was it. Uh, we didn't need a full-time video person. So how do you know Kate? Then, uh, Kate was actually, we've known each other. She was actually, she was a customer of mine. Hmm. All of my best hires have been customers of mine because they, they get me and what I do and she understands my crazy brain um, and just kind of rides with it. She's laughing because you just got to hold on because uh, <laughs> I don't know where the hell, because every day is going to be different. Um, but you, you have to, I, I really, really believe you have to find someone who's aligned with your mission and who mm. has a good heart. Like even now, um, as we're starting to grow and now, because all of this, we sold thousands, thousands of bars without spending a dime on marketing. This is all now just us and word of mouth. And, and we wanted to wait, you know, till we really got the systems down. I didn't want to go full uh, pedal to the metal until we knew, okay, here's shipping, here's the labels, here's the process, here's the pe- post office. Are they yeah. picking up all this stuff? Now we could start accelerating. Um, and even now we're going to start hiring people to help with fulfillment. I go to this coffee shop down the street and there's a, a woman who works there and she is the most amazing customer service I've ever seen. She remembered immediately, hi, um, oh, what's your name? Right, nice to meet you. Every day she greets me with a smile. One time they forgot my sandwich. She said, here's a card, your next one's free. My next hire, I don't care what it is going to be her. Hmm. Like I don't know if she knows anything about marketing or social media or anything. You could learn that stuff, but you can't learn soul. Yeah, totally. I mean, I appreciate you highlighting that mission. I've definitely made that mistake in the past of that that's in my head, and I'm not sharing enough with staff or people, and that's really at the forefront of your mind and getting them on, make sure they're on board with that. Everything, uh, even everything we talk about. You know, we'll end the emails. Let's change some lives. You know, remember, this is all about helping other people. Because um, the more products we can get out there and help people and get them in their system and change their life, I mean, that's what it's there for. It's, it's, it's never just about, we need to make X, X amount of money. It's never been about that. Speak to um, some of the, the cool stuff you do with marketing. You know, you're a marketing mind um, yeah. within the box and then also outside of the box. But you have a couple of these things inside the box, these inserts. Yeah, these cool. right now. And we're going to be testing. And that's another reason why I love doing our own fulfillment because we can go to the printer and in an hour have a thousand of these to test. The, so as of today, when they get a box, there's two cards. One, it's here's how to have the bar. 
again, with that other bar this I ordered, one? they just gave, yeah, they just gave you a box of stuff and like, eat them. Um, ours <laughs> is a part of a system. Like, have this bar every morning. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. It's part of a system. So that was important that people are, and, and I'm going to work on my next book um, all about this, this system. So that's one. And the other one is to give maybe some incentive for social sharing. Yeah. Uh, this promotion is take a picture with the box, tag us at hashtag uh, rewind boom box, And on your next order, we're going to give you a free T-shirt with it. Yeah. Just as a way of thanking you. And people are starting to do it. Um, so those are two fun, really low cost things. Um, and we're going to be experimenting a lot with, we have a, we're working on a really cool, uh, powdered protein. Really, really cool. It's going to blow people away. Um, that's going to be ready in about eight to 10 weeks. And we're going to do a, a unreal uh, promotion, uh, with that one uh, here. The, another reason why I want to set up a studio is we, we're doing live videos. We're still experimenting with that. We're going to take these videos and put them everywhere. Um, so, and we're going to do taste testing. We're going to do workshops in here. And I, I'm not, look, I'm not trying to be everywhere. And, and another, one of our main marketing things is really what I'm doing right here with you is going on podcasts, uh, connecting with people who have a good audience with my potential market and being able to talk and share because I know what my strengths are. My strengths are getting on and just talking off the cuff, you know, no teleprompter, just real heart-to-heart conversations. Because I know if people listen to me for 45 minutes, they're either going to love my message and me and be into the rewind, or they're going to think I'm the most annoying guy with a New York accent. <laughs> either way, I'm going to get some kind of response. And it's cool. Either way, right? Uh, but I'm – so even right after this, I have another podcast interview. So I'm, I'm starting to reach out to my network and doing two or three podcast interviews a day and – uh, not trying to reach everybody, but reaching the right people. And, yeah. and even if they don't buy a bar, even like, you know what, that's cool. I can do that. I can have one bar a day and they have a bar they like, then that's fine too. It seems like you made a deliberate decision to keep everything in house and not go on Amazon or any of their channels. Is that the case yeah. right now? You know, I'm still exploring all options. Right now, yeah. everything's with us. Um, I, I keep everyone, I mean, all my colleagues saying you got to be on Amazon you got to be on Amazon and we're exploring it we're still I, I'm still not sure. I just like to hear inside your head a little bit so what's the what's kind of the the reasons or what are you thinking maybe there's a timeline on it, maybe there's not yeah, I don't know here's here's why here and there's advantages and, and disadvantages right. we now we have like I went into our local I live in New Canaan Connecticut very very wealthy um, neighborhood and I was talking to the person who owns the bagel shop, like, oh, can we, you know, we'd love to have your bar. So I put them in there. But I don't know. I, I don't really want to play the retail game. Um, it's, a t- it's a tough game to play. I know some people you've had on can scale it. We're not a mass market scale product. You have to try it first. Right. Uh, even the packaging looks cool, but people can Not go, yet. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So With I don't certain know. audiences, yeah, I think it so really it always, resonates. Yeah. So right now we're just trying to kind of control it, um, and I, as I said, I relationship is everything. And the minute you you get it other places and they could find it on Amazon, we don't know who they are. Maybe some will come back to the site. I'm sure a lot won't. Amazon doesn't share the data with us or who customers are. Yeah. So I can't follow up with them. I don't know if they're doing well. I don't know if they're doing the if they're having the bars. Um, so I'd rather yeah. keep the the growth a little bit more controlled. No, I, I know every single person who's ordering. Even now at this point, I. That person, oh, that's their second order. Um, it's obviously not going to always be like that, but I, I like just kind of taking my time. I'm, I'm in no rush. I want to build this and build right. this right. Yeah. Um, so, I right see now, you no. be an interesting channel. Um, you know, from personally, um, like medical offices. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, chiropractors that have asked. Yeah. Um, two customers are chiropractors, and they said they're going to put it in their office and see yeah. if people like it. Uh, yeah. You know, our first company that did really well. The idea behind it is because I had such a list of a big list of personal trainers at the time was we're going to have all these training studios selling our products. But then when I actually did it, what I found was they moved like no products mm. and, and they, they took up like 90 percent of our time and effort versus, you know, the five or six or eight or 10 super online affiliates who had listed 600,000 people who one email could sell 3000 products. First, right. the, the studio owner sold, like, you know, would sell like one bottle every two months, and but they would take up all our time. But what do you think? Do you have handouts? Do you have inserts? Can you do an online thing for our client? And it just, 
it, you know, it's, it's a parade. time suck. Yeah. It's, parade, it's, it's not even 80, 20, it was 99, one. Um, and I'm trying to focus, I'm trying to learn from my mistakes, uh, and just focus on kind of the bigger stuff and what's going to move the needle more. And mm-hmm. it's much more efficient for me to be on a podcast like yours that can reach thousands of people, uh, and get to kind of see me and understand versus you know, being in a studio, you know, just you the box here. It. Yeah. Again, I, I'm okay with controlling. And we, and we actually had one guy just buy a couple boxes wholesale, and he's going to see if he could sell them. And we're willing to work with people and kind of experiment. Yeah. I, the, the one thing you can never get is too set in your ways. Like I have a, a pretty good idea, but as an entrepreneur, man, you got to be agile. You never you know. Gotta, you just got to move and go and see what happens and never get too tied to one thing. Uh, don't get emotionally involved. Just I'm, We're just going. We're going to see what happens. We're going to have some fun. What about the uh, – tell me about the A-team. So the the A team, yeah, because I've been in this industry for so long, I have so many good relationships. Every single person I asked to be on the A team to kind of get behind the bars, every single person said yes. And we have people who train celebrities, and you know, Dr. Oz's trainer, and we've had like my friend Dwayne who trained the 49ers, Dana who trained the New York Yankees. We have all them who just are behind us. So uh, it's pretty cool just to be able to send one email like Ryan, I'm in, whatever you want. Hmm. Uh, and you do that from always. You know, trying to do the right thing and treating people well. Don't burn bridges. It's yeah. it's it's stuff we learned in kindergarten, Jeremy. But so few people do it. Everyone's about the quick dollar. How do I make money now? And they screw everyone else over. So just do the right thing. <clears throat> so I want to hear what's next. What's on the forefront? You mentioned there's another product coming, but I want to just tell people check out RewindToday.com, and um, he's got a fun video. I'm sure you should sign <laughs> up for their. If they have any email list, if Ryan has any email list, you should be subscribing to it because yeah, he I've been sends, doing the emails on there. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I get them, and yeah. he just whether it's life, business, health, it's always fun, and that's kind Thank of you. who you are, right? And the, the video on there is fun, and I'm sure there's going to be more fun videos to come. So check out uh, rewindtoday.com, and I can I can vouch I've tried the bars and. Um, they're delicious and they're very healthy. All the ingredients are great. Um, it. Next, what's next? Like right now, I mean, it took eight months mm-hmm. to get this out to people. Right. Now it's out to people. What What's next? Uh, now we just keep going. Now, now the fun begins. Now we market, uh, we promote, we... Um, yeah, you know, we are going to work on our second product, which is going to be that real. I, I don't want to give away too much now. Um, I was actually just on with the manufacturer before. A really, really good drink. A really good drink. So that's going to be next. That's probably about eight to ten, or maybe twelve weeks away. Just got to make sure the formula is right and everything's set. Um, so that'll be next. And we're just going to. Well, we're, it's going to be a focus line. We're not going to have a thousand products. It's going to be a few things. Only things that are really good. Only things that I would personally take or have my family and friends take. And, you know, now, now we're promoting. We're going to start doing some. We're going to start doing some paid traffic. We're going to get on podcasts. We're going to do some workshops. Um, I've just been on two TV shows. We're going to do some more media. And uh, yeah, we're just going to change the world. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Small, simple, small simple as that. That's one it. One bar at a time. One person at a time. So. Changing the world one <laughs> bar at a time. I like that. <laughs> Ryan, I know you have another uh, meeting in a minute, but um, I just want to thank you. It's always a pleasure and it's an honor to have you on. Everyone check out rewindtoday.com. I just want to be the first one to to thank you personally. Thank you so So, much, Jeremy. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Have an amazing day. And uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Cool. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. Just if you find the same advice